Hi, I'm Jude from HeadFi.org. At the last Can Jam at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest, I had a chance to do a short interview with Noel Lee, the head monster of Monster Products, formerly known as Monster Cable. But not long before Can Jam at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest, I actually went out to the Bay Area and stopped in for a visit with Monster at their headquarters. And there we did a more in-depth interview with Noel Lee, and I've decided for this episode to use that footage instead. In this interview, we talk about everything from specific Monster products, like this headphone around my neck here. This is the Monster Diamond Tears, and I think it's the best-sounding over-ear headphone Monster's yet made. And, of course, we also talk about Monster in a post-Beats era and other things. Anyway, check out the interview with Noel Lee, the head Monster of Monster products. Hi, I'm Jude, and we're here at Monster headquarters. I haven't heard their new headphones. As some of you know, they've released a bunch of new headphones. I'm going to be listening to them shortly. But Noel Lee came, uh, had, took the time to talk to me, so I thought I'd ask him some questions even before I had a chance to listen to new headphones. Uh, Noel, thanks for taking the time. Hey, Jude, thanks. So, Noel, you know, you have, everybody thinks of Monster and headphones, they think of Beats. That relationship is going to be ending, if it hasn't already ended. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I wanted to talk about what Monster is doing in the sort of post-Beats era with respect to headphones. Um, because I think even during the Beats era, the stuff that you guys made that I liked the most in terms of headphones was your turbine stuff, stuff that you okay. didn't even do with Beats. Um, admittedly, I wasn't crazy about any of the Beats in-ears, but I, I really like your, your turbine line, the tribute, the trumpet, uh, the new gratitude. But uh, uh, So I'm just curious to know, from an over-ear side, is there anything going to be? Uh, is there anything in that new line of headphones that you think would appeal to head fires the way the tribute stuff? I mean, the the the, the turbine lines have. Yeah. Well, so uh, maybe I can just talk a little bit about the Beats relationship. First, yeah. Okay. You know, the Beats was a wonderful thing for us because we we did accomplish a lot of game changing things. We were able to uh, develop really deep bass uh, in a headphone. You know, dynamics, articulation, all the kind of things that Dre and uh, the Beats team wanted to hear. So we developed from that technologies, new technologies that we're able to put in all of the the new Monster headphones. But I'm just an audiophile, you know, by uh, uh, by profession, or maybe right. by profession. <laughs> but uh, uh, th that was a really good learning experience for us, and it was a good time uh, working with those guys. So, but you're right, you know, people say, "Hey, what's next?" Uh, you know, after Beats. Well, we're going to pursue our passion, which is really articulation, uh, dynamics, clarity, uh, vocals. It's not just about bass, it's about the quality of bass, right? It's, uh, you know, how tight it is, uh, you know, how controlled it is. And it's not about highs only, it's about are they smooth, are they silky? So that's what you're gonna find in, uh, you know, our new headphones. It's more toward an audiophile sound and maybe less toward mass sound, you know, because the kids wanna hear right, know, the, right. the pounding bass. And, uh, you know, we got, a good balance in bass, but we don't overdo it. Well, yeah, that's the trick, right? I mean, you're trying to address a lot of different tastes. Uh, you have a pretty broad product line. You're trying to address a lot of different tastes. And that's that's really what I'm wondering, too, is, is again, with the Beats in-ears, they never really resonated with the audiophiles, per se. I know they were right. popular in the consumer market, the, the broader consumer market. But like I say, even while you were doing that, you had the, the stuff that the audiophiles really liked. So now you're doing that, and so you're saying that we could probably expect that on the over-ear side now. Now that yeah. you, this isn't oh, yeah. going to be Beats, you're independent of Beats now with respect to the over-ears, yeah. um, and you think we'll be able to see something well, like that. Well, it's a different kind of sound, okay? Yeah, and uh, what we did with Beats, there's a certain audience for it, but yeah. for uh, audiophiles like uh, you and I, you know, it's uh, more about balance, it's more about uh, sound staging, it's more about uh, the air, you know, around uh, vocals and uh, instruments. And so we got the technology to do that. And, uh, but uh, when we're fine-tuning what we're doing with a, our new over-ear headphones, we're very, very laser-focused on creating a different experience than what you can achieve in a headphone prior to that. And that's regardless of price point. You know? and, but we're going to bring out our price points that you know, hopefully are more affordable than some of the really high-end audio products. But because of our scale, because of our size, we're able to take some really uh, new developments and new technologies with our team and be able to bring them down to a price that you know hopefully most people can afford. So in the new line that's already out, you, there are several products that are kind of launching now, and it seems like there's starting to be a push yeah. for the new products. Um, which of those models would you say, I mean, I think you're familiar to some degree with the HeadFi audience. Yeah. Which ones would you say would probably resonate immediately or most immediately with, with the HeadFires? Well, 
the one, uh, some of the ones that I like are probably the least likely uh, you would think would be audiophile okay. savvy because they're not audiophile looking. So one product is called Diamond Tears. And we designed this uh, for a uh, more mass uh, genre of music. Okay, so it is not just about pop music, it's about the classical. You know, it's about jazz. So, uh, you know, uh, articulation, clarity, um, you know, the right balance of uh, bass and highs, it's absolutely amazing. But it looks like a diamond ring on your head. It's right, right, diamond, right. It's, it's bling. It is bling all the way. I mean, if you don't want, if you want to be uh, subtle, this is not the headphone for you. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I wore it around my neck at CES, <laughs> and uh, that was the, uh, I've never been asked about a headphone more than that one. Uh, so I was actually chased down the mall by a guy that worked at a kiosk to ask me what it was around my neck. Well, you know what we were going to yeah. do with reviewers like yourself? We were going to disguise the headphone because we didn't <laughs> want you to be influenced by the way it looked. Because you say, this can't look good. It just, I mean, this can't sound good because it just looks so good. Yeah, that one, admittedly, I still haven't heard how it's going to sound. That was just a cosmetic-only sample. I just wanted to see what the response would be to its appearance. And it was actually positive from, from uh, men and women. I don't know how it's going to resonate uh, with head fires. We'll see, you know. But, uh, uh, but it is, uh, I mean, it is, it is it's certainly a... Uh, a noticeable headphone. Well, the one for head fires, that's, you know, because um, diamond tears can skew female or male. But the male one, okay, for, uh, you know, the really hardcore guys will be a, a new product called Inspiration. Okay. I actually like the way that one looks a lot. It's, yeah, well, it's clean. Yeah, it's really know, clean. It's, it's uh, much more laid back. And, and, <laughs> a little you know, bit. So, so if you're, uh, <laughs> you know, but it's not a Bose either. It's, uh, you know. No, no, no. I was just teasing. <laughs> I mean, relative to the Diamond Tears, yeah, it certainly is more laid back. But, uh, yeah, I haven't heard that one yet, so I'm really looking forward to that. Well, we worked really hard on that one, okay? And that took, and actually, we delayed release because it wasn't ready. Okay. And so we didn't release because it's been a while since CES, and it's just coming out now. And at CES... Uh, we were pressured to put it out, put it out, put it out. We said, no, it's not ready yet. So, uh, you know, our guys, our team, uh, you know, in looking at the manufacturing, looking at the materials, we had to get everything perfect. So, uh, and my favorite one is the passive. It's available on noise canceling and in, uh, in passive, but, you know. Yeah, I didn't know until today that it was available in a passive, yeah, a yeah. passive only model. Well, you know, and I think passive has a um, more going for it from an audiophile standpoint, from a head fi uh, enthusiast standpoint because it's more pure. You know, you're not going. Th whenever you put something through electronics, it's doing something to it. Right. Sometimes it's doing something positive, and sometimes it's doing something negative. So it's always a balance. So the way we designed headphones, that it has to sound good pa uh, passively. Okay. And if it sounds good passively, then we work on the noise canceling side gotcha. to try to replicate that. So, but it, it always will get in the way. So I'm kind of maybe dumping on my own product. Okay, but if you no, no, I, 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 that's that's a it's an honest observation, that as far as running it through uh, active circuitry. But the active model, the noise canceling model, does have a passive mode. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So How that, does that compare to the passive only model? Would uh, you still give the edge a little bit just because? Uh, yeah, because uh, of the space uh, that the batteries take, okay. uh, that the board takes. You know, it, it uh, slight it's, advantage to yeah, passive only. Uh, passive only because you got the more you got more acoustic space. Okay. Okay. And, and in fact, in the uh, passive mode, when you got the electronics, it's only on one side of the cup, so we have to balance it. Right. On the other side. Okay. So you get the sound stage image, but that's a, that's the kind of extent that we go to. Even in the active mode, we want to make sure you get a balanced sound. But you got if you got electronics on one ear and nothing in the other ear, okay, so it's not going to be balanced. Right. right. Oh, you mean uh, physical space? Physical wise. space, yeah, the, yeah, the acoustic space. Right. Yeah, so I'm, yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing that one too. So, do you think that one more than even? Well, certainly from a style standpoint, I think that one will probably be uh, uh, something that the head fi type user would probably be quicker to adopt. Just strictly speaking, style versus the diamond tears. What about sound versus the diamond tears? Would it be? Um, are they similar or? Uh, I, I'm going to say it's uh, uh, warmer. Okay. Okay, and. Uh, but it's to the point of, you know, not where one's better. Okay, it's just different. Okay. I really like the gratitude in here. Yeah. Would oh, that yeah, be something? Like that? Yeah, so would that be, would the inspiration be, you know, I mean, I'm not looking for something identical. I'm just trying to get an idea. Is that similar maybe in a balance, in tonal balance? Uh, you know, I would say uh, no. No. Uh, no, <laughs> okay. I, I, I would say it's 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 different. Okay? okay. So we're not trying to match what we're doing with our ears, which, uh, you know, you can't believe the amount of time we spent on airplanes and every place else right. with, with in ears. I love uh, in ears better uh, than uh, noise cans. I'd rather have noise isolation any day. But 
um, and those are the ones I use too. Right. But the the uh, it's really difficult to design over your noise canceling. Okay, because it's like servo control. You know, it used to be in loudspeakers where uh, you'd have a servo control. With the to, subwoofers, especially. Yeah. yeah, subwoofers, but also you know the Infinity Servo Statics. Okay, those those were uh, uh, planars with uh, servo control. But you know when you introduce something like servo control, you have to have an error to correct. Okay, so if you're correcting an error, well, the ear doesn't say, oh, let's shut out the error. Okay, and let me hear what's after the error. No, no, you hear the error, and then you hear the uh, you hear the control. That's why negative feedback is is bad in amplifiers. That's why servo control never made it uh, for speakers, and even a servo control woofer is not as good as a non-servo control woofer because you got the error. Well, noise canceling is the same way. You got microphones that are monitoring the noise from the outside, the noise canceling from the inside. So you got a lot going on, and the more sophisticated noise canceling, uh, you know, headphones have more multiple microphones. Gotcha. You know, to do the noise canceling. So I want to capture as much of the outside air. I want to put in the right amount of uh, you know a negative noise back in at the right frequencies to cancel it out. Well, that's a lot going on. Right. That's a lot going on in a headphone. Yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing the. I'm, I'm going to maybe try the active noise cancelers on the way back. Uh, to Michigan, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing that. Yeah, well, listen to both. You know, yeah, absolutely. You, uh, but I, I'll tell you this: it's the best noise canceling headphone in the world. All right. Okay. So from that standpoint, I don't like noise canceling. But, right. Uh, but if you want noise canceling, you don't want to drown out the uh, uh, airplane sound. It's the best one. Yeah, I'll, I'll be compa- just so you know, I'll be comparing to ones by Sennheiser, the Par- that new Parrot Zik. Okay. Um, uh, the Bose QC15. So yeah, I'm good. looking forward to hearing the inspiration noise canceler relative to those. But uh, so yeah, those are probably the two models, the Diamond Tears and the Inspiration right yep. now. Yeah. Anything? I mean, are you going to continue to think uh, to release new models? Oh no, man, I can't tell you that. But you know, <laughs> you going to show me anything uh, that we can't yeah, talk about? Yeah, maybe. But if you know Monster, yeah. it, it doesn't stop there. All right. Well, Groovy. Well, thank you for taking the time with us today. Uh, I'm going to be listening to the new models. We'll talk about them. Uh, and uh, thanks, Noel. Okay. All right, Jude. <laughs>